guys and welcome to a new episode of the New Leaf Podcast. My name is Garmin and I'm a full-time knitwear and crochet designer. And you can find me on Instagram as at newleafdesigns.nl. Um, this is not going to be a regular podcast episode because I thought it would be fun to go through all the things that I knit or crocheted this year. And um, I use Ravelry to kind of archive my projects and it's, it's just fun to see, to look back on all of the things that I made and also it's really handy because if I abandon a project for a really long time, which I often do, <laughs> um, I might not keep the needles, be it knitting or crochet needles, with the project. And in my Ravelry project page, I often uh, note down which needle size it is. So it's just really handy, and uh, you can check which yarns you have used, uh, how many yarns you've, uh, how much you went yarn. Um, it's just. I like doing it. So I thought I would go through all of the projects because I also tag each project with, um, for example, I tag whips with the tag whip and I can see now that I have 12 whips. Um, I have four unfinished objects, so things that I don't really plan on finishing. Uh, last year I have 29 FOs and this year I have 24 FOs so far. Well, so far it's just there are two days left in the year. I don't think I will finish anything more. So I have 24 FOs. Um, yeah, so you can just, if you finish a project such as my Fairy Tales Fox, you can then tag it with um, for example, what I did, 2019 FO, and then in your projects, you can organize, um, say, different tabs, and you can, you can choose which tags to use for that. So I used FOs 2019 for that, and I can see all of my FOs in one place. So I thought we, we would just go through them. Uh, some of them I don't have anymore, so I will put pictures on the screen here or there and uh, tell you something about it. And yeah, I thought it would be a fun video, so I hope you enjoy. Please do excuse my puffy eyes because I'm super tired. <laughs> <laughs> I just had a weekend um, weekend away with my boyfriend's family and we had a little bit too much fun so there was not much sleeping so yes that's why um, so first up is the second version of my timber cowl which I will put on the screen right here so my timber cowl is one of my own patterns it's super easy it's crochet you crochet double uh, double crochets in the back loop and you form a tube basically and it's really nice to do with a variegated yarn um, it was just really quick and easy so I made a second one as a gift for a friend and that was my first finished object of the year next up I made two hats which is also from my own pattern called the thin hat which is this hat and I made two versions so I used three colors for this and in this version, the rusty red color of the yarn is Skepis Namaste. Um, I used the rusty red color as the main color in this hat. And for the other hat, I flipped the red and the blue. And I actually gifted that one. So, uh, so yeah, I made two hats from uh, three balls yarn and as I said it's my own pattern the thin hat uh, which is also a free pattern on my blog so you can check it out um, I will leave a link to all of the projects I talk about in the down bar so you can just click it and go through my project page and then you'll be able to find out more about the patterns and the yarns um, so I recently made a pom-pom to go with it. This is made from a fluffy, um, what's it called, furry tails yarn. So it's crocheted, this pom-pom, and I, it's, it's super, super easy. Um, so I didn't even think about doing a pattern, but I do think I might do that. So that will be coming up. 
So the fan hat is really easy. It's a color work hat and it's suitable for beginners because it's, you know, it's super bulky yarn. So yeah. So those were my second and third finished objects of the year. My fourth finished object of the year were the Earl Grey socks, which have appeared in Yarn 8, which is a bookzine by Scapius. It's called Yarn. And this is number 8, which is Tea Room. Is it number 8? Yeah. Tea Room. And so these are the Earl Grey socks. And I think this is only just come out. I, I lose track of the publication dates because I finished this very early in the year. Um, and then there is a long lead time, you know, so um, they work behind the scenes on um, the patterns, you know, tech editing, text editing, um, pattern translation, which I have done for the issue before this, and um, uh, photography, of course. So there's a long time <laughs> that goes into pitching uh, your idea to commission to actual print. So, so I finished this early in the year, and I think this one came out in October. So, but yeah, I really, really loved making these. So those were my fourth finished object of the year. Then my fifth one, which is the Chevrainbow XL blanket. This is another free pattern of mine. And it's a chevron rainbow blanket, hence Chevrainbow. Um, and I had made the regular version last year which was just called Shiv Rainbow Blanket, and um, I made this version out of the XL uh, stone wash and river washed, which is just an Aran weight um, of the same yarn, actually. So this is also a free pattern on my blog. You can find all the yarns you need in that blog post uh, with links to stores. Um, this uses a color pack and then some um, uh, 50 gram balls as well. So in the color pack, I think you have 50 uh, mini balls of each color and um, then you add 50 gram balls as well. For the regular version, you need 10 additional 50 gram balls. For the Excel version, you need 17 additional 50 gram balls. This might be my favorite project of the year because it is so colorful. We use it every day. Um, and it was super quick and easy to make. So I would definitely recommend making one of these if you like to make blankets. Okay, number six is the pink sweater, which is also a free pattern of mine. And so this was published on my blog in March, I think, of this year. It's a relatively cropped sweater although you know i made the petite version you can make a longer version as well instructions are included in the pattern i just looked up the measurements to be sure so this sweater i have designed to fit a 29 inch bust to a 49 inch bust and it will have about three inches of positive ease so the largest size is 52 inches um and I do plan to make a more size inclusive uh, range for my patterns. Um, I, I am planning some new garments for the new year. And um, so for those, I will include more sizes. Uh, but I do also want to make time to go back um, to this pattern and also add some more sizes because it wasn't that hard. Um, the only thing that I found uh, challenging was to calculate how much yarn you need because this uh, this sweater uses two yarns held together. So it's a um, kind of a DK or worsted merino and then uh, you add a mohair. 
I really really like the effect I <laughs> I did threw it in the washing machine once because I thought it would be all right uh, on 30 degrees um, I thought it would be all right but it uh, wasn't really so uh, so I recommend if you're using the yarn which, which I use which is Scapies Merino brush and Scapies Rhythm uh, mohair that you wash it by hand so <laughs> but you know it's just it's just a tiny bit felted um, it's not particularly smaller than it used to be so it's just a little bit less soft so yeah wish I hadn't done that but I really really like the rolled um, not hem neckline with this one because um, I think it really gives this I don't know this kind of like sophisticated touch so I really like that but yes um, I do want to include uh, not include um, increase the size range for my patterns. Uh, I'm not really experienced with garment patterns. I think this is my second sweater and my first one I think was just three sizes which is ridiculous but um, it's not super hard. I can figure it out and I'll do my best and I think this is really really important to do uh, because you know, people with a larger size have more difficulty um, shopping, you know, um, shopping for their sizes in stores. So actually, they are more forced to make their own clothes. And then if we as knitwear pattern designers don't include their size, then, you know, it leaves less and less and less options for them. So. I just want to be as inclusive as I can, so I will be increasing the size range for this one. Number seven of my finished objects this year were some sport weight socks, which I'll show here on the screen. They were a gift, so I don't have them anymore. They were super quick to knit up. Um, it was Regia, and as I said, it was sport weight, so I think I used two and a half millimeter needles, and I it just flew by. It, it was a small size and uh, a bigger yarn, so it flew by. Uh, and I really, really enjoyed making those. Number eight might be my most worn object, uh, object, my most worn garment of the year, which is my no frill sweater. Um, looking back, you know, on the size uh, inclusivity conversation this pattern is not doing very well um it's it, i i don't know the exact size range but it's not doing very well um so i don't want to say too much about this i do really like uh the yarns that i used uh which is debbie bliss um oh i can look it up here <laughs> i'll actually look it up. Uh, it's Debbie Bliss Fine Donegal Tweed um, and Stranded Dye Works Mohair Silk in the Meddlesome colorway. So the base yarn is a grayish blue with purple flecks and then the mohair that I used from Stranded Dye Works is more um, really dark um, really dark blue uh, it has some silver, it has some green, and together it just makes for this beautiful watercolor effect. And it, it has blended a little bit with wearing, but um, yeah, I just really, really love it. I will say uh, about the sizing, I knit the smallest size, while I am not a small, as small size, um, and it has um, stretched with blocking and washing and yeah so I think the largest option in the pattern might have more positive ease than the pattern actually says so I do want to mention that but yeah overall I really enjoyed it but um, yeah just in light of the size inclusivity conversation I don't really want to promote this pattern too heavily. 
Next up is, is it number eight or number nine? I don't know. Um, so the Enchanted Mesa, another sweater. This is a pattern by Stephen West. And ooh, it has been creased. I, I don't wear this a lot. Um, I don't wear it much at all, really, because it has a really weird shape. And if I would knit it again, I would put this sleeve in higher because I do like this effect, but I don't like the poncho effect of a sleeve put in this low. Um, and yeah, if I lift my arms, I have a bare tummy, so it's just not really flattering to wear. And um, it, it was really fun to make because it is a um, unusual construction and you get to play with color, uh, which I really like, but yeah, <laughs> I would suggest some heavy modification to make this a wearable item. And also a uh, note on the sizing with this one, it's just one size. And uh, the designer does give some instructions on how to um, make it larger or smaller uh, with uh, different different yarns. So basically, if you use a DK weight yarn, you get this. If you use an iron weight yarn, you get this size. So, but I don't really think that is the way to go with sizing. Um, yeah. But it was a really fun knit. Um, yeah, again, I would I would suggest heavy modification, and yeah, I've only worn this twice. I think I did really enjoy the yarn I use. It is Escapius Whirly Gig yarn, which is an alpaca blend. It's it knit up, it knits up beautifully. It's an ombre cake, so it goes from teal no um it goes from this banana yellow all the way to teal and so i did really really enjoy that it was one of these huge cakes so you can use the inner or the outer thread and um i started with the inner thread and then for these parts i used the outer thread and i thought that was really fun to do and then along the way i saved some parts of each color and i used those for the sleeves. Yeah, so it was really, really fun to make. I made it for the Edinburgh Yarn Fest and I wore it there. Um, but yeah, I, in hindsight, I would have rather knit something else, something more wearable. Next up is my striped and stranded hat which is one of my patterns that hasn't been released yet. Um, I am working on the pattern right now. Uh, it will be available free on my Patreon page for the elder patrons, and it will be available as a paid pattern on my Ravelry, uh, in my Ravelry store. Uh, it's a color work hat. You use two colors or more, it depends, but at least two colors throughout and um, I really like it. It's a simple hat, um, but yeah, it uses color work. If you're not familiar with color work or if you want to learn it, you can go to my Patreon page where I have the Color Work Confidence Masterclass, which is a whole series of videos uh, which will guide you through um, the all of the steps of color work knitting. And I'm also now recording another set of videos specifically for this hat. So this will be an upcoming pattern. Then, uh, this is a very special project. It is not a pattern, it is improvised, and it is both knitting and crochet. This is the June mandala that I made for Simi's studio. Um, Simi is the creative director at Escapius, which is my yarn sponsor, and uh, they, ha they had an... Um, a mandala project this year where um, she would draw uh, a mandala each month and then ask a designer to convert it to the yarn arts and I thought it was really fun to do. Actually I'll put up the, um, if I can find it, I'll put up the drawn mandala right here. Um, 
course the drawn mandala is more detailed than my crocheted and knit version but I still like it very much. See this is all knit and this is mainly crochet and then the edge is crocheted again. So this is a really fun, um, fun project. It was a nice palette cleanser and um, yeah, I really liked doing this. Then FO number 12, which are the Wild Strawberry Socks, and this is a paid pattern of mine. It uh, involves bohus knitting, which is a combination of color work knitting and knitting and purling. And it is a really fun effect. I did not use purl stitches on the sole. So you can see the color work pattern here, and then with the purling it becomes this, which is a really cool textured pattern. And with variegated yarn, I just, I love knitting color work with variegated yarn because it gives just an extra dimension to the project. And I really like these. I was planning to sell these, um, this sample actually, but um, then I decided that I didn't want to, so I wore them for the first time this past weekend, and yeah, that was nice. So I got to wear a new pair of socks. Number 13 is a secret project. Uh, there are two more secret projects uh, within the 24 FOs that I made, so I can't talk about that. More will be revealed next year. Number 14 is the As If Tea, which is delightfully pink. <laughs> this is my As If Tea. And I used yarn by Atelier Het Wolbeest, which is a Dutch indie dyer. And I, for the mohair, I used my own hand dyed mohair, uh, which I dyed with cochineal. And I really like it. It's uh, exceptionally warm. Um, I was skeptical about the short sleeves, but because it's so warm, um, you don't really need long sleeves. But I haven't worn it in winter yet, so this is also, it's not super wearable, but it's nice for, um, for yarn festivals, um, because it's, it's just a little bit more out there, especially with the color, but yeah, you could, I could totally make a more subdued version of this, but um, subdued isn't really my style, so <laughs> I thought, why not go all out? So that was a really, really fun, um, fun make. So this is the As If Tea by Shay Johnson. Go and look her up on Instagram. She's knit and crochet, and you can find her patterns on Ravelry. My 15th uh, finished object is my Tenya Tea. And in light of the discussion or the conversation around racism, I don't want to talk too much about this designer, but um, I did really enjoy knitting with this yarn, which is by Chestnut Cabin, uh, which is uh, an American indie, indie dyer living in the Netherlands. Um, her yarns are amazing. There is so much depth in this color. I call it the chocolate rainbow, um, but it was something like salted or cinnamon, cinnamon fudge brownie. I think, and it's on her yak base. Um, it was a singles base, so it does really, um, it does pill, and um, it doesn't, um, how do you say this? In the armpits, there's already quite a bit of, uh, there was quite a bit of pilling, and uh, I can see some gaps um, forming, so I'm, I will need to 
the, do some mending on this. Uh, I haven't even worn it that much, so I will say that, but you know, with, with a single ply base, it's kind of to be expected. So uh, if you want uh, an item that is more durable, then uh, go for a BFL or virgin wool or a high twist yarn. Um, uh, but yeah, her merino yak base was just a dream to knit with, so I really, really enjoyed that. My next finished object is a pair of socks and they are looking a bit grubby because I wear them a lot. So <laughs> sorry for that. Um, I just I just love these socks. The yarn is Fine Fish Yarns. Uh, the pattern is self-drafted. Um, I do want to write up a pattern for this, but uh, I haven't managed to do that yet. It's a toe-up sock and I did a gusset and heel flap. Um, yeah, toe up, so that was exciting. Um, and they are my best fitting socks yet. Do you say that that way? These are my best fitting socks so far, so I really, really want to write up a pattern for this and I hope I can convert it to all sizes. Um, yeah, because with the increasing for the gusset math, I am not completely there yet, but um, these will be coming soon. Um, I just really enjoyed these. Uh, the yarn uh, looks to be a kind of it has a kind of striping effect, um, which I really like. And yeah, I did a long cuff. I love a long cuff. It's one by one ribbing. I don't do twisted rib. I don't like how how mm, gappy the stitches are. Uh, I, I like a dense fabric, so I did not do a twisted rib. Um, yeah. Uh, other than the heel that I used. The rest is pretty much the same as my toe up sock um, tutorial videos on YouTube, which are very, very popular. I get messages about those videos every day, which makes me very happy. So if you want to learn how to knit toe up socks, um, it's also suitable for sock beginner. So if you've never knit a sock before, you can totally follow my videos. They are called the Simple Toe Up Socks and you can find them on my YouTube channel. Next up is the Mohair Don't Care Color Block Scarf, which appeared in Molly Makes Magazine number um, 114. And I will put in a picture here because I haven't received the sample back yet. It's only been published last week, so, uh, so I didn't expect to have the sample back in time. Um, I'm just really pleased uh, that I was able to work with Molly Makes Magazine. I've worked with them in the past and I really enjoy it. Um, uh, the, the scarf, I think you need two or three balls for each color. Um, it's Scapey's Mohair Rhythm, which I also used for my pink sweater. It's a really, really nice yarn to use. Uh, I used it double-stranded and with a six millimeter needle, and there's a big cable in the center, and it's just super cozy and fluffy, and yeah. If you want to knit this scarf super easy, um, then go get your hands on issue 114. It's in stores since December 27th, so you still have a month to get this issue. I think we're in October now. Yeah, I finished the mohair scarf in October, and in October or November, I also finished the Scarf Lake shawl, which is huge. Uh, it's the Mystery Knit Along by Stephen West this year. I really enjoyed making it. Again, it was an unusual construction. Uh, I love the... Um, the, you know, the feeling of the mystery knit along. Uh, I did keep it, I, I did manage to keep it a secret for myself until the end, so I was really pleased with that. And, 
Now that my hair is pink, I might actually be able to wear it more because I haven't really worn it. Um, I use it more as a indoor blanket, schlank, schlanket. <laughs> yeah, but um, it is really, really nice. And if I had thought about the colors more beforehand, it would have matched my coats better, but um, I love it nonetheless. The yarn is uh, Twisted Finch in Fossil and Kelpie. And it was one of the official kits uh, from Stephen and Penelope. Um, yeah, I'm just really, really pleased with this. I actually finished these a little bit earlier in the year, uh, but I haven't uh, set a end date on Ravelry, so I don't remember when. Um, these socks, so <laughs> they are finished for now, but they don't have a heel. Uh, and that is because I plan to sell these. Um, but I'm not sure if I'm going to go through with that because, yeah, just selling hand-knit objects is just, I don't know. I don't know about the pricing. Um, yeah, I just don't feel comfortable with it yet. So, um, so I hadn't put in a heel yet um, because I wanted it to be. Um, I wanted, I wanted to be able to adapt it to a certain size. Uh, I think they are sixty stitches in circumference, and then um, the heel placement is kind of crucial for. The actual size so I thought I would put those in once I knew the, the size of the um, of the customer but um, yeah I, I just don't know if I'm gonna go through with it uh, there's a mock cable on the leg which I like I haven't blocked these yet which is why the cable is a little bit frumpy like that but if you wear them it will spread out and I, I do like these. I might just finish them um, as a gift. Yeah, I do like them. Um, it's my own pattern. Um, I haven't written anything down. It's just um, just sock net sock with a mock cable. Uh, it's the same cable that I used for one of my scarf designs. Um, I guess I'll do a pattern with, with a mock cable someday, but it's not on my priority list right now, so don't hold, don't hold your breath. Um, yeah, but these are also a finished object from this year, although technically there is still a width, but anyway. Then my final three finished objects of the year. <laughs> these are also looking a bit grubby because I've worn them quite a bit. So I finally finished my Christmas tree socks this year. I finished them, was it November? Let's see. Yes, I finished them November 5th and, whoa, hello sunshine. <laughs> um, and I cast these on on Christmas Eve 2016. And I remember I was I was so ill at that time. Um, I just had a cold, but uh, it lasted for three weeks. I was in bed the whole time. Uh, I had ugh, just I had such a headache. I was playing uh, Stardew Valley nonstop, which is a farming game on Xbox. Super fun. Uh, and I had I had really ambitiously cast on for these socks. Um, I don't know if it was my first color work pattern, it might have been a color work project, it might have been, um, yeah, it just, it turned out really nice, but when I got to the heel, it just was way too tight, and then I threw it in a closet for two years, until earlier this year when I decided to finish the first sock. And then I also knit the second sock, uh, the second sock being much uh, better size-wise than the first sock. But they fit and um, I'm really pleased with them. They are super, super Christmassy and 
I love them. Um, the pattern is O Denneboom, which is O Christmas Tree by René Kies. It's a free pattern on Ravelry, so go and make your own. And uh, I'm sure it won't take you three years like I did, but um, yeah, I really, really like these. Then <laughs> my Vlogmas cowl, which I finished during Vlogmas and was released as a free for 24 hour pattern on Ravelry. It has um, a gotten quite a bit larger, so I think I'm gonna wash it and then maybe stretch it vertically uh, because it is it is quite large now. So if I put it on, it's not really covering the front of my neck anymore. So, uh, and I'm already, I'm getting quite a bit of a cold or a, like a scratchy throat. So, and I did wear this cowl um, open like this. I, uh, I did also fold it in my coat, but I just, I would like, uh, it to be a little bit um, tighter. So I might put some elastic in here, but um, I'm gonna see how the washing goes first. Um, I did really enjoy knitting this. I am working on a second version, but I think I'm running out of yarn, so I need to reconsider that. Um, the, yar the yarn that I use for this one is Wool Met Verve uh, Pebbles which is a really fun yarn. I don't have it here, but it's um, kind of a boucle yarn with little bumpy bits in them <laughs> and some Suri yarn, Suri silk alpaca, which is also by Wolmet uh, Verve, but it's really similar to the uh, La Bienname Kumo. Uh, so you can substitute uh, one for the other. Um, but I really like the colors of Wolmet Fev. They're so soft and fairy tale like. So I really, really, um, I just love them. Um, and it's so soft. So I, I do really enjoy wearing it. Um, so again, this uh, pattern. You can find it in my Ravelry store. It's a paid pattern now, but um, during the introduction it was free for 24 hours. And I think I might do more of that kind of promotion uh, next year because it re was really successful. So yeah, just make sure you stay in the loop when I have new patterns coming out. So that was my uh, second to last FO. And my last FO of the year is this little fox, which is the Friendly Fox. It's a free pattern on my blog. Um, it's a part of an amigurumi series. The first one being my, let's see if I can, there's just a whole pile of things here. Yep. Uh, the first one being my sleeping reindeer right here. So this was the sleeping reindeer and this is the friendly fox and who knows who else might be uh, included in this series. Um, so the tail is made with Scapius furry tails and it's just it's really nice and cuddly and soft and uh, the main um, plushie is made out of Scapius Katona which is 100% mercerized yarn. Um, it's super quick to make and uh, you don't need a lot of yarn. Um, yeah so I'll leave the link in my Ravelry project page so you can go to the free pattern. They, uh, for most of my free patterns, I have a paid uh, PDF version as well. If you'd like a easy printable um, and also the patterns that are for free on my blog, they're written in both Dutch and English. And the English is just plain black text and the Dutch is in italics and it's uh, light gray. Um, 
and I think it's quite clear to see the difference but if you turn on your um, like an auto translator or something it might be very confusing so uh, the paid PDFs they are separate for each language so that may be easier for you and if you're buying the paid PDF version you are also supporting a small business me <laughs> um, so every purchase is very very much appreciated so yeah that was my last finished object of the year. I do have some works in progress right now. Um, I'll quickly show you one of them, which is my last pattern um, of the year. The One Blink for Yes socks. Oh, this is the second sock in progress. This is the One Blink for Yes socks, which is a Christmassy sock pattern. You can see the Christmas fairy lights here and there is an R um, and this is a hint to a Stranger Things scene uh, from season one where Will is trapped in the upside down and communicates via lights with his mother and uh, he sends the word run. Um, wait, I'm not explaining this right so his mother has um, painted the alphabet on her wall and then with one light per letter and then he lights up the lights corresponding to the letters anyway this is way too long winded but um, as a kind of creepy Christmas socks I wanted to um, to knit a pair of socks that spell run which uh, which is also the word from the series uh, because the monster is coming and Will needs his mom to run. So I'm gonna, well I have embroidered R on this sock and then it's gonna be UN on the second sock. And I am halfway through the second sock, uh, just a little bit more and then I can start the fairy lights, um, which is color work knitting. Uh, there are in some rounds there are three colors per round uh, but you can also choose to just use two colors and duplicate stitch the um, the fairy lights on later that is totally fine uh, but if you are a student of mine in the color work confidence master class you will have the um, video for three color color work knitting and you can use those tips to your advantage on this pattern. So that is my last pattern publication of the year. And yes, I published the pattern before I finished the sample. Um, and that is with many, many thanks to my friend Carrie, who knitted some samples for me, and I was able to use those for the photography. Um, yeah, and uh, for 2020, I'm planning to use um, more sample knitters for my patterns because it really speeds up the process for me and I can produce more patterns that way so so yeah I'm gonna use more sample knitter knitters next year um, yeah and I'm really really looking forward to all of the things that I will be making next year and I hope you will be following along with me thank you all very very much for following along with me this year I really hope you enjoyed it and I wish you the best of luck and a lot of joy and fun with all of the things that you will be making in the new year and please let me know what your first crafty endeavor will be in January will you be knitting something or crocheting something or do you want to learn a new skill or perhaps you're making a dollhouse like I am <laughs> yeah just let me know in the comments and thank you all so so much for uh, following along with me this year and I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope to see you in my next video bye bye